Rise and shine. How are you guys? Let's try to salvage this semester. So Humanities 101, Winter 2020. Critical thinking in a pandemic. So I have a few things I want to talk about today. Three things, very quickly, okay? I'm gonna make uh, just a few of these short videos. Uh, number one is I want to talk about uh, Mill's method of causality very quickly um, a little bit of a recap covering a little bit more material then I want to give you a very quick br uh, breakdown of uh, how we're gonna proceed with the, the rest of the semester and then lastly I want to talk about uh, fallacies regarding uh, causality cause and effect uh, what's uh, often called uh, the fallacy of questionable cause, which takes uh, many different forms, okay? And I think that's applicable to uh, what we're living through right now, a lot of the information that we're getting. Okay, so for starters, um, I wanna do this quite quickly. Mill's method of um, seeking out a probable cause, okay? Formulating hypotheses. You have data. You're moving from data to uh, an, an inference to the best explanation. Okay, the process of abduction. Uh, it's an inductive process. You can always be wrong, but you're increasing your odds of being right. So he basically has uh, four of them. Okay, what's called, uh, the first one is method of difference. The second one is method of agreement. Uh, the third one is uh, joint method of agreement and difference, which is what you would use in a clinical uh, trial if you're testing a drug. You're trying to isolate a single variable. And the last one is uh, correlation. Uh, okay, so method of difference. One example that comes to mind, Google had it as uh, they basically um, their logo for a while is uh, Ignaz uh, Simmelweis. So look at Ignaz Simmelweis. Look at what happened there, okay? He was noticing a certain trend. Uh, women were coming into the maternity ward, they were dying. Uh, they were getting bedside fever. And he said, what is, what is making this difference, okay? Why is it that on any given year, 15, 16% of women are dying? Yeah, and it was just regarded as a fact of life. And he said, no, what's the difference maker here? Okay, um, the difference maker, he noticed was that some of his colleagues were working in the morgue in the morning, uh, doing autopsies on cadavers, and in the afternoon, they would be delivering babies, obviously without washing their hands. So he proposed, he said, this, is, this seems to be the, the single deciding factor here. And he proposed that, uh, he basically proposed uh, one of the early proponents of the pathogen theory of disease, okay? Um, you're carrying these pathogens, this bacteria, and it's making people sick, okay? He was basically shunned, he was ridiculed, he was laughed at, okay? Uh, people tried to shut him up. They were offended by what he had to say. Uh, his colleagues as well. Uh, and he turned, out, he turned out to be right, okay? He started washing their hands. And you see, after that point, year after year, the death rate basically uh, dropped to around 1.5 uh, to 2%. Okay, you see the graph. I'll provide, uh, you'll see the graph on uh, the, uh, the slides I'll, I'll provide. So what's the difference maker, okay? Um, if a hockey team plays well against one team, you know, I think about uh, Montreal Canadiens a few years ago. Uh, in one series, they played extremely well. They won the series. In the, sec in the subsequent series, they played against a similar opponent. Uh, all the stats were basically the same, except for uh, one factor, okay? The difference-making factor was they had lost their goaltender, and uh, that, that was it, okay? So look at those examples on the slides. The other main one is a method of agreement. Method of agreement is also when you have a kind of an idealistic data set where all factors are different except for one factor, one singular common factor. So let me give you an example. If you go to a restaurant with a bunch of friends and um, you all get sick, you all get food poisoning. Uh, first of all, you have to look for what, what are relevant factors, okay? You can't say we all got food poisoning because we took turns wearing the sombrero hat. It doesn't really work that way. Uh, what is the, is there a singular common relevant factor 
And John Stuart Mill says, that is the factor. Well, it's, it's very likely to be the, the, the causal factor, okay? Um, it's where you should start. It's where you should start your investigation. So if you all go to a restaurant, you all go to, uh, you know, some Icelandic restaurant, you all order different things on the menu and you all get sick. Um, but you all tried what Anthony Bourdain described as uh, the most disgusting things he's ever had, is the famous fermented shark. You all sampled the famous fermented shark and you all get sick. Well, that seems to be the common, singular, relevant factor. So that's where you would start looking. Let me give you another example. Um, recently there were a bunch of physicians in Canada uh, that contracted uh, this uh, COVID-19 and they all knew each other, they all hung out, and then uh, they realized later on that uh, they had all basically gone to the same curl curling tournament. So that was a single uh, common factor and therefore likely to be the causal factor. The third one there is uh, joint method of agreement and difference. So let's say if you're testing um, alcohol on social anxiety and you give a bunch of people alcohol in a setting and then you, you, you measure that against their social anxiety, uh, that might not necessarily be it. Okay? You have to have another group which is going to have a kind of a placebo so that you can isolate that variable. Um, this is what you do with clinical trials, okay? This is what they're doing when they're looking to see whether certain drugs they talk about, let's say CBD, uh, is potentially good for seizures. Well, how do you figure that out? You have to have uh, controls, you have to have control groups, okay? You have to have uh, one group that's gonna have the CBD. Uh, is it CBD in conjunction with ongoing seizure medication? Is CBD as effective as seizure medication? Uh, what happens if you put a placebo in there? Okay, you can do the same thing with um, all, all sorts of health claims. Let's say uh, acupuncture, okay? You can give people acupuncture and it'll, and it'll all feel better. But you haven't ruled out that they're feeling better because it's just a placebo. So what you have to do is you have to contrast that with a control group where people are going to get basically this uh, fake acupuncture, okay? Or theatrical acupuncture. And if they come out reporting feeling just as good as the initial group, then it's not the acupuncture itself, but it's the placebo of the acupuncture that's doing the job. Um, so that's the third method, okay? There's a few more examples uh, on the slides, so I'll refer back to that. And then uh, the fourth one is correlation. So we can have a positive correlation, a negative correlation. Uh, correlation is more in terms of degrees. These first three that I mentioned are a sort of on-off switch. When the variable is seen, the effect is seen. Um, correlation is more in terms of degrees. So you can correlate, for instance, um, years of schooling with annual income, but the point is that's not guaranteed. Okay? Um, you can expect a general, um, a general frequency to occur, but uh, it's, it's not guaranteed because you have people that haven't gone to school that are very wealthy, and you can have people that have gone to school for a very long time that uh, actually don't earn that much, okay? So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, you can also correlate whatever you want. So another important lesson here, and this probably goes to um, a form of kind of causal confusion, is confusing correla uh, co correlation with causality. You can correlate, um, and this is, this is actually a good correlation, you can correlate violent crimes with ice cream sales. Um, and those things are nicely correlated, violent crimes and ice cream sales. Uh, but the fact is that both of these things occur as a result of warmer weather, as a result of summertime. Okay, Both of these things go up, not because they cause each other, but because there's uh, a third variable there, a more relevant variable, uh, causal variable for both of them. So keep that in mind, okay? And there's a bunch of other examples of correlation. Um, and ridiculous correlations as well in the slides. Okay, let's just let me give you a very quick uh, breakdown, a breakdown of how we're going to proceed here with the rest of the semester. Basically, we'll have uh, six responses, one of which you've done, five percent each. The conspiracy theory or pseudoscience analysis 
is still there. There won't be an oral presentation component. Obviously, we're not meeting in class. Uh, so that will be just the uh, essay form due May 1st. Uh, that will be 35%. So you have 30% for the responses, 35% for the uh, pseudoscience analysis. You have 5% for the homework that we've already done. And uh, there, are, there are two tests, 15% each, uh, one of which is done and one of which uh, I'll be distributing shortly. Okay, now I want to talk about one more thing very quickly, just a few minutes, is uh, questionable causality, okay? Ways in which we get uh, confused about causality and we do this in all kinds of ways, all right? So, one way that we get confused about causality is um, we're not very good at dealing with coincidence, okay? Um, and so, re refer back to the slides, coincidence, uh, something happens and we have a natural tendency as human beings, it's a cognitive bias called apophenia, we pick up on patterns, okay, we try to find connections that aren't there. So, um, you know, a friend calls, uh, you just thought about that friend and you might be tempted to conclude that you're some, somehow psychically connected or something like that. Uh, look back at, uh, look at the example of the, the birthday paradox. Uh, once you get about 23, 24 people in a room, we did this in one, one of the classes actually, it worked well. Okay, once you have about 24 people in a room, there's a 50% chance that two of them share the same birth date. Um, doesn't mean that, you know, they're meant to be, doesn't mean that they're best friends for life. It just is what it is, okay? It's a statistical distribution. Other forms of causal confusion. Um, basically, simpl simplified thoughts, okay? Mishandling multiple uh, factors. So, one example that I like is uh, the Titanic, okay? We say the Titanic sank because it hit an iceberg. Well, that's partly true. It was uh, uh, hitting the iceberg was uh, not necessary, but uh, a sufficient contributing factor, but in, in, not in and of itself sufficient to sink the Titanic. So they said that if the Titanic would have hit the iceberg straight on at full speed, it would have sank. So it was a wonderful freak accident where the Titanic hit the iceberg at just the right speed, at just the right angle, and just the right way, and that's why it sank, okay? So it didn't sink just because it hit an iceberg. So that's kind of oversimplifying uh, the, the, the larger, more complex uh, causal reality of what happened there. Um, we can confuse temporal order, okay? Uh, you can confuse cause and effect. So if you want to be extremely ridiculous, you can say, uh, you know, when I go to bed, the sun sets, and when I wake up, the sun rises. Therefore, I make the sun set and make, I make the sun rise, okay? Um, a little bit more real-life example is you say something like, um, you know, I took, a, I took this placebo and it made me feel better. Therefore, this placebo, this medication, um, this herbal remedy, whatever it may be, it worked. Uh, so you attribute it. You attribute uh, the feeling better to this to this remedy uh, when you you're in some sense ruling out, not ruling out, but you're uh, oversimplifying the situation and you're ruling out the prospect that maybe you would have gotten better nonetheless. Um, another form of ca uh, causal confusion, and this is an important one, is confusing necessary and sufficient conditions. Okay, when you get the recipe all wrong. Um, so, for instance, if you say, you know, money makes me happy, uh, you would say maybe money is necessary, at least to some degree, for happiness, but it's not in and of itself sufficient for happiness. What does that mean is uh, having money alone does not make you happy. Okay, I mean... Uh, known this for thousands of years. Uh, it's a, a much more complex recipe, okay? Money might be one element, one ingredient in the recipe, but there are a lot, a lot of other factors uh, that are uh, involved there. Um, so guys, I wish you guys a good afternoon. I hope you're enjoying the pandemic and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you.